Welcome to the Executive Podcast Suite, coming to you from Hill and Knowlton Strategies, Singapore. Hello and welcome to Conversations with me, Adib McGee, from the Executive Podcast Suite here at Hill and Knowlton Strategies, Singapore. I'm really excited today to speak with one of Asia's key figures in the PR and communications industry, H.S. Chung, who's joining us from Seoul, Korea. H.S. is the president of Hill and Knowlton Strategies, Asia, and the founder and CEO of Synergy HNK Korea. HS, it's so nice to have you here today, virtually. You know, I'm looking forward to, to talking, learning more about yourself, and also to talk through the, the, the crazy year that has been uh, at HNK. Well, thank you, Adip. Uh, so great to see you. You look great. Uh, <laughs> thank and thank you. you for having me. You're welcome. So HS, I think to start it off, you know, to state the obvious, and 2020 was a challenging year, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Not, just from, not just for businesses, but more importantly, I think, for the people, for people, the communities and, you know, our, our friends around the world. But from a business perspective, was our business at uh, H&K APAC affected by COVID-19? And, you know, what mm-hmm. strategies did we adopt to navigate ourselves through this pandemic? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in summary, I think 2020, we actually have become stronger. That is, in summary, what I think our H&K Asia uh, uh, resulted in. Um, And part of that, you know, obviously every business, including us, when we back in, I would say, February or March, um, I think what really struck us was the fact that there was so much uncertainty ahead. Mm -hmm. And the word that uncertainty was what frightened everybody, not really necessarily the virus. I mean, it was, what is this coronavirus Um, going to do to affect our business going forward, you know, and and when we say business, not just in the PR or communication industry, but across just about everything, um, you know, from the fundamentals of the key business industries to the way we do business, even governance, um, you know, um, how people perceive business, all of this is just so uncertain as to, um, um, you know, how we can predict, for example. So that was what was so difficult in the front, but I guess what is different now is that um, we are a lot more sure Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. what we want to do and things have become much more certain. And it allowed us to really look at things and reflect on the fact that we should actually be prioritizing on things, whereas, You know, I don't want to say before coronavirus and after coronavirus. I mean, we're in communication business. I mean, we obviously have to uh, follow what's happening uh, around the world or even business or even people. And because things are changing, we also have to follow that. But the reality was, where's the area of our focus? And, and, you know, many times we talk about it, we we have strategy meetings, but um, you know, it's nice to have on a piece of paper, but we never really sensed it and felt really urgent like this year. So I think that was the uniqueness of this year. And, you know, thankfully our strategy um, has become much more um, focused in a way that we are focusing a lot more on, um, we're always gonna focus on corporate and brand reputation as our DNA, but, even within that sector, there's it's so broad. I mean, we can talk broadly about reputation, but I think the area that um, people are now more focused on and businesses must most focus on um, is things like um, sustainability, mm-hmm. corporate social responsibility, for example. Um, and many businesses and brands have always focused on external communication, whereas I think it's never been so important like this year where we recognize the importance of internal communication, for example, and employee engagement and stakeholder engagement. So these are all area that we think it's super important that we need to prioritize and focusing on top of being able to consult the C-suites, for example, because C-suites are the ones I'm, pr- I'm very sure are the ones who's mostly um, um, probably staying up all night, um, <laughs> trying to think what to do and what changes to make. Yep. They know they have to change, but exactly what? I mean, it, it's, it's calling for action, right? Mm. So being able to consult them and guiding them is also another area that I think we need to prioritize going forward. So these are three areas that I, I, I've felt this year we've um, managed to put into a strategy to focus on. Perfect. And leads me to my next question, HS. You know, we're in the business of of people. Relationships are 
I think more important now than ever, right? So it feels like the most of 2020, we were all working from home, right? Whether it just happened really quickly. So do you think the lack of interpersonal communication and interaction affected productivity? I think it was a nice test and trial period. Um, I think definitely working from home has added efficiency to somewhat, but then um, there are some also negative effects from it. From my view, things like office culture or team building, or even brainstorming, for example, or even doing ideation, creativity. I mean, you got to talk to people, you got to engage with people, you got to do things that's even not your daily routine stuff to be able to come up with ideas or, you know, uh, be able to actually broaden your views. And sitting there um, and searching on computer or, you know, doing conferences or meetings over um, video calls, I mean, it's nice and efficient, definitely, but there's some limits to that. So I think going forward, um, I mean, I, I'd be, I'd love to hear from you as well, but I think maybe a hybrid version yeah. of yeah. working from home and working from office uh, could potentially be adopted. And also it's very different by market by market. Some mm-hmm. markets, it's just expected that everyone's in the office um, and some markets, it's relatively less that. So again, it really depends on the market as well. What do you think? Um, for me, I think it challenged how we adapted because I think we, we were forced to work from home so fast, not just our industry, I think across all industries that just finding that balance in terms of how do we incorporate our work self in an environment where we would usually just be ourselves, right? So whether it's Adib at home or HS at home. So finding that balance, and as you said, you know, for me as a creative strategist, I need to, to mm-hmm. interact with people that face to face, you know, understanding body language, taking cues of people. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think right. that that sh- sudden shift did throw me a little bit off balance, but then mm-hmm. again, it, it, it's how we deal with it. And you know, the, the process is in place, whether it's support as, as a professional or as a person. So I think we've, we've sort of adapted quite well, at least here in Singapore as well to, to that, to the new normal. I know that's the term everybody's throwing around, but yeah, I think, I think we've done well. It was a shock for everybody, I think, but yeah. Sure, sure. And then here we're doing the, the, you know, split work from home and then come to the office to have that face to face. I think that's working out quite well. Absolutely. But it was, it was, um, it was a nice trial period. And I yeah. think not that we've chosen to do it. I mean, it, we were mandated to do it. Right. <laughs> exactly. So um, I think um you know, we will learn from it. Definitely. There's a lot during 2020 that we probably have learned from. And I think going into 2021, fact is coronavirus and COVID-19. I mean, there's really not a stop to it yet. There's no definite date Mm. to it yet. So we're going to start seeing a bit of a hybrid model, I would Mm. think from 2021 going forward. So that's how so-called businesses and the way that we do business and how we work sort of shape ourselves, not exactly. completely just from 2020, but as we go into a hybrid model into 2021, that's when things start shaping up. So by the time we talk to each other again, a year from now, yeah. I think that's when we'll see what has really changed and what has really not. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I see it. And then, okay. So HS, so I guess during this time, clients were, were unsure about everything that was going on, right? So what were the main challenges that our clients were facing at the time and what strategies did we give them to help them navigate, you know, through these changes that they probably never experienced before? Mm. I think if you recall when this um, whole thing happened back in, I would say March, um, just about every email, uh, you know, we would receive reports about how consumers changing, how media landscape is changing, this is the new normal, you know, how do we do things differently, this and that. I mean, there were like tons of research papers, tons of surveys, results and all of that to a point it was, it just literally became too much to absorb, right? Um, I think what is difficult for our, um, our decision makers, our clients and decision makers is that they know there's a change and they know they have to change. I think immediately they're facing um, the difficulty of deciding how to prioritize that changes, mm-hmm. right? And also when you actually adapt or um, when you actually confirm such a business, uh, sorry, a strategy um, going forward into the new normal, 
you know, you have to change so many things. And probably the biggest headache they have is changing internal organization yeah. and the yeah. internal system as to how the changes will need to adapt. Now, that means a lot more employee engagement, a lot more stakeholder engagement, because it's obvious everything's going to become a lot more online, e-commerce, um, you know, it, it, everything's going to become more leaner. Um, they're going to take away business leaders. It's going to take away a lot of the risk areas, that, you know, things that were like there, but anything that they feel is unnecessary, they will not prioritize it, mm. for example. So what does that mean? Overall, it means probably a lot slimmer, a lot more uh, simple organization and structure is what they're going to go after. Now, during that process, they have to communicate mm even redundancies, um, they might even have to communicate different work structures, um, you know, and this is not just in communication across logistics to yeah. sales, to retail, to everything. So, you know, no one has done it before. So how do they know what exactly to fix or yeah. to restructure to? So th th these are area I think they probably are really suffering more than even even trying to think about external. They know externally everything's changed. So they got to fix internal to be able to adapt to that, right? Yeah. So I think this is their current probably biggest headache. Uh, and going into 2021, it will continue to be their biggest headache. Yeah, I can foresee that as well. So 2020 unpredictable. So what what are learnings that we can take from the pandemic? Learnings from 2021, right? Learnings uh, for 2020, yeah, right? 2020, yeah. I think um, as a business, uh, we've learned so many things. And, and I think, you know, um, from a, because we're in PR business and also in communication business, um, it was actually a year to reinforce um, the work that we do is so important. I mean, we, I feel I've never felt this proud actually be in this uh, industry to be able to help corporations and brand continue and reshape their reputation because reputation going forward is going to be so much more diff so much more important um, in everything they do and to be successful right so I feel really proud about that um, but then you know that was a very big observation and learning which I think our staff and everybody in our industry should be proud of um, but then are we capable to really consult our clients to the level that we are, we can make them competitive or we can really be sure what we're consulting. So again, similar to what I've just said about internal fixes and a lot of headaches that people have, leaders in agency side, you know, for us, um, training up our staff to be able to consult in these area in a much more uh, solution focused type of way, uh, is something that you know makes me stay up at night you know how do we need to train people how do we need to get them to think that way so again um they will come to our clients will come to us we will need to be ready and for me this is a big learning um for during the pandemic that i think depending on which company or agency does it better and can do it more in agile way and faster i think um it's gonna make a whole difference yeah, 2020 was, I learned a lot as well in 2020. And okay, so tw moving to 2021, what are the key trends that you anticipate? What are the key trends that am I seeing? Um, again, I think um, I'm seeing people taking action now. So 2020 was more, should we say, um, discussing, thinking, and planning. I think 2021, all of a sudden people are um, taking action. Mm. So um you know trends that i will see is that people will take action and during that course there's going to be trial and error and i think it's going to be so important for agencies like us to not only hold on to our client hands but you know be able to really lead them and guide them um to, to make them feel confident of what changes they're making so that's definitely a trend that I, I will see. Another trend that I, I will see um, is things like how businesses will focus more on sustainability, corporate governance, um, things like um, social responsibility. Now this is gonna become so much more important. And I think it's finally, um, businesses are taking it seriously in Asia. 
So, you know, I mean, obviously in Europe, this is sort of kicked off a lot mm. faster than Asia, but I think it's now happening in Asia. So again, this is an area that we want to guide our clients and that's why we've launched Better Impact um, and have, um, you know, corporate social responsibility strategy and advisory board, all of this, because we want to step ahead and be able to consult before they make decisions. So these are some of the area that I think that, um, people will look into. Again, online, I'm not even going to talk about because it's so obvious, yeah. but I think what is going to, what I do want to flag is that e-commerce is going to be super important. And I think more and more of that's going to happen, definitely. But what that also means is your reputation online is going to be so much more important. Um, are people thinking about this? Um, what exactly, how are people perceiving you online? Not just on your Facebook or Instagram, but overall in your total online journey. Yeah. Now, these are some, another uh, area that we're very focused on trying to help our clients going forward. Cool. And lastly, HS, congratulations with Synergy HNK completing 20 years in 2020. A remarkable achievement. So can you tell us your journey as the founder? And what advice can you give to professionals in our industry? Um, I would say just try it. That's my view. Just yeah. try. Um, it's better than regretting not doing it, right? So I'm not saying everybody to open up your business or anything. I mean, even when you're doing your own work, when there's something new that you want to try, um, you know, ideas don't, sh you shouldn't be shy to not even mention it or tell your bosses or tell your people you know, different ways of doing things or how you perceive different things. You know, what I'm basically saying is try to always um, think of something new or different ways. And, you know, and rather than just thinking alone, let's try it, you know, mm -hmm. that that's how I perceive um, entrepreneurship. I mean, in a way, and, you know, people don't have to necessarily open their own business to be entrepreneurs. Um, you could actually have that spirit, even if you're working in a company. Um, as I said, you know, uh, we, I believe in h &K Asia, I guess, because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm trying to give everybody a bit more of authority and, um, you know, power to try things, you know, even if we fail, I mean, what's, what's the worst case, we just then don't do it, right? Yeah. Um, but I would rather do that than just being too careful or not do, doing anything or doing everything just like before or mm. never changing things, right? So we could be entrepreneur i guess again as we as uh, even as um a member or a staff of of a, of a company um it's just the, it's the thing and yeah. the willingness to try i think that's going to be very um that's important i think yeah. and and that's something that i would advise to give advice to our people in this industry because we're at the perfect time yeah. to try this, right Exactly, HS. So I will take your advice as well. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, it's lovely speaking to you. Thank you so much, Adib. I enjoyed this. Perfect. I'll catch you soon, HS. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.